everyone. I'm Dennis Burns from Boulder Sounds. Welcome to this video walkthrough of our sample library, Fiddle, for Native Instruments Contact. So in this library, we have three forms of documentation. The first one is a PDF manual. It's about 17 pages. It's very detailed. It comes in your download package. I highly recommend you read through this to get the very most of the instrument. Also, built into Contact, if you look at this drop-down menu at the bottom, it says About Page. This is a built-in online manual. It's not quite as detailed as the uh, PDF manual, but it's there for you to have a quick reference. The third form of documentation is the Mouse Hover Over Help. So here at the top, you see I for Info. Make sure that's highlighted. When you point your mouse at a button or a knob, in the bottom left-hand corner, it shows the function of that particular button or knob. So that's very useful. Um, so we're looking at the front page right now. The main thing on the front page is right here by the F holes of the violin graphic is a real-time display. So let's take a look at what that does. Okay, so what that does is show you in real time what exactly is going on. Are you in monophonic mode? Are you in polyphonic mode? Is it using a down bow or up bow? Uh, different articulations being used, a slide or unison, etc. And I will get down to the key switches at the bottom of the page and the different colored keys in just a moment. Okay, so let's move on to the microphone page now. And as you can see, we have two main panels. We have an instrument panel and an effects panel. I'll spend most of my time today in this video on the instrument panel. So we have a drop-down menu here with sub-pages for the instrument panel. So we go to the microphone page. And as you can see, the fiddle is recorded with two mics, a tube mic and a ribbon mic. We can control these completely independent of each other. So, for example, I might take the ribbon mic and just turn it off. I might take the tube mic, pan it center. Now I essentially have mono samples. And we have independent EQ control over each microphone. So on the drop down menu here, you can see we have four EQ tools to work with. Also, we have presets that we can create. So you can create your own bank of presets you can save them individually, load them as a bank. Uh, and the beauty of this is you don't need to save the contact instrument again. It's already written into the data file of contact. So we have a lot of flexibility here. We could have a wide stereo image between these two mics. You could use one of the mics in the center in mono, or you could have just a nice little tight stereo image. All sorts of control over EQ and volume levels of each mic. Now let's move to the Expressions page. This page controls dynamics, or volume, pitch bend, and vibrato. So in the left column, we have the CC control with the set with this knob to control dynamics, or volume. And you can just spin that knob and set it to whatever CC control you want. Below it, you have a filter knob. If you turn that on, it engages a low-pass filter. And when you're playing at l when you're using lower volumes with your CC controller, it will engage the filter, which will make the sound darker, which is natural to acoustic instruments. You can choose the percentage of that filter being used with the knob. And also, if you want to just reset any of these knobs, you do a command click for the Mac or a control click on the PC. It'll set it back to where we had the default setting. Notice up here where it says CC. If I click on it, it turn changes to pitch bend. So now I can use my pitch bend wheel to control volume. And I find that really useful in, in doing my work with my sequences. Uh, I like the way the pitch bend wheel snaps back to center to a neutral setting or increases the volume and I can just let it go and it snapped right back to center. It just works well for me. I like it a lot. Uh, we also have the filter button down here as well. Notice if I don't use the pitch bend for volume, then I have the option of using pitch bend for traditionally what we use it for, pitch bending. 
and you can set these independently bending up or bending down i really recommend you leave it though to one semitone it just to me it sounds unnatural any bigger than that i tend to use it just for a very small pitch glide into a note you know something like that kind of thing or just making a note slightly flat for a moment and then bringing it back up uh, the next column is our lfo scripted vibrato it's assigned to cc number one which is your mild wheel and the amount can be set here, the frequency. And frequency add is a special parameter so that when you use your mod wheel past halfway point, about 66, it brings in an additional uh, add to the frequency and the speed. So it makes it much more intense. So let's just see what the vibrato sounds like here. So it's a real natural sounding vibrato. Um, and one thing about fiddle playing is fiddle players don't use a lot of vibrato. They use it more as an ornament. It's not like a classical player who, you know, really leans into the vibrato on many notes. Uh, so I would suggest just using it sparingly if you want it to really sound fiddle-like. Let's move on to the slides page. This is a very important page. Watch up here under my mouse where it says half up slow. You notice that highlighted. So as I go through the different slides, it highlights so I can keep track of which slide I'm working with on this page. Notice here it says round robin on. So the slides were recorded with two round robins. So every time you press a slide twice in a row, it cycles through two different samples just for variety's sake. However, you might have a piece of music where you really love the sound of one slide, you want that slide every single time. So you can use this drop down menu and choose to have it trigger round robin number one or number two or cycle through the two round robins. They're very similar, but of course they're slightly different. That's the whole point of round robins. So now I can control the speed of the slide. So if I take that same slide, I move it up to, I can go as high as 200%. Let's go to 144. So you hear that same slide a little bit faster. If I want to set it back to its default, 100% command click on the Mac, control click on the PC. What is this? Sample start. I can set the sample start to be midway through the sample or anywhere in the sample I want to do it. So let's bring it up to 43%. Let's hear the same slide. I have a click, a glitch. Why is that? Because it's not hitting on a zero crossing because I'm in the middle of the sample. So I can use this attack knob and put a little fade on it and get rid of that. I can also further control it by shift clicking on the attack knob. This is a little hidden feature. And we have the curve of the envelope segment of the attack, concave or convex. So I can have control over that as well. If I go back to alt option, click on that, set it back to the attack. So this is very flexible. Um, one other thing about this, you can tweak all your slides, you know, to tailor to your piece of music you're working on. One other thing important I'll talk about a little later, all the slides are in polyphonic mode, so uh, you can very easily just trigger a slide like this. And there you have some polyphonic double stops that sound really great. The next page is the settings page. This is an important one. In the left column, it says default mode, monophonic. So we've set it up to be the default as monophonic. You can change that to polyphonic if you wish. Just click on that button. Let me show you a little bit of the manual here. This is important to read a little of this to you. Monophonic mode, there's automation going on in the background. Up and down bow is auto alternating. So when you play a scale, for example, the strokes are alternating automatically for you. Down bow, up bow, down bow, up bow. If you play a sample beyond the length of the sample, it automatically changes you to the next bow stroke. If you're doing a down stroke, you run out of sample room, it will automatically switch to the up stroke. Automation is also detecting if you're playing attack or legato style. So attack style would be, for example, two notes with a slight separation between them. Legato would be overlapping notes and you're in monophonic mode, so when you play the first note and it goes into the second note that's overlapping, it'll make a nice smooth fade, creating a legato style of playing. 
So that's all monophonic mode. When you're in polyphonic mode, there's no automation going on at all. You control all that yourself. You're the master of that with key switches. So you decide how many strokes will it be downstrokes or will it be alternating or two downstrokes and then a couple upstrokes. You can control all of that yourself and it's, it's quite easy to do. I'll show you that a bit later. So look at our next column, attack mode. That's where we have the two notes separated, right? We can control the attack speed, the curve, and the sample start. So for example, uh, so here's an attack sound. So if I just want to increase the attack a little bit, just up the milliseconds, it has a softer edge to it. I can do the same thing with legato. So when I connect notes smoothly, if I want that connection to be a little slower, fade perhaps, I just increase the milliseconds. Okay, so you have total control over that. The next column, staccato, dampening. So when I hold down the staccato key switch, I can choose to have how long the staccato is gonna ring for. So if I wanna shorten it, right? Or I can bring it way up to one second. So that you have control over, and of course you can automate that and assign a CC to it. Control it in real time if you want. Below it we have release. This is the volume of the release samples. So each sample has a release sample assigned to it. So let me turn the space IR convolution off for a moment. Right now you're hearing the actual release sample at full volume. So there's a little reverberant sample right after I release the key. If I turn that off, it sounds like this, very dry. So it's up to you how you want to use that or different percentages of it. Personally, I like to use it up all the way at zero dB. The next column says auto bow time. It's set to 1500 milliseconds. So what this is the timing between the change of the bow strokes. Right, we just heard down bow, up bow, down bow. If I want that to happen at a faster frequency, I can make the knob to a lesser value. Okay. The next one says bow noise. This is a filter simply to reduce, reduce the noise, noise of the bow. Um, personally, I like to use it about halfway up. I like some bow, bow noise in the sample. Uh, you can turn it up all the way. It pretty much eliminates it. So that's, that's your call on that, how much bow noise you would like in your fiddle sound. Personally, I think it's sort of like the breath of the fiddle, like the dragon, the fire coming out of the dragon. I, I love the sound of it. So there's something about polyphonic mode I'd like to point out to you. So let's put the instrument in polyphonic mode on the settings page and let's move to the front page so you can see the display. So polyphonic mode defaults to a down bow all the time. So if I play a little passage like this, watch the display where it says down bow. It always says down bow, right? Well, what if I want to put some up bows in there? Then I can use the up bow impose key, the key switch. When I release that, it reverts back to down bow. So if I want to do some alternating or two down bows and two up bows, I can just release the up bow when I don't want an up bow. It automatically goes back to down bow. So that sounds like this. So when I mentioned in polyphonic mode, you are the master, you have to control all the key switches. It's not as big a pain in the butt as it might sound like because it defaults from down bow. You can just simply hit the up bow when you need it, release it, it automatically returns to down bow. Oh, another thing, double stops, when we use this term, that is the same as polyphonic mode. We just use those two terms interchangeably. It means you're playing more than one note at a time. Let's move on to the key switch page. So on the right column here, you see it says slides, key switches, and here's all our slides listed. We have half step and whole step slides uh, at three different tempos going upward, and then we have downward direction slides, uh, half step and whole step at one tempo. But you can change those tempos of those slides, remember, on the slides page. 
This column correlates to the yellow keys over here in the key switches. The middle column, articulations, that correlates to the green keys. Those are double stop, staccato, hyper staccato, unison, and crunch. And this column on the left, these are imposed key switches. Those correlate to the red keys. The imposed key switches basically override anything that you're already using. So if you play a passage that's really legato and connected, you decide you want that more separated, you can just use the attack key switch and then it'll give the attack of each note a harder uh, attack. Next we have open strings key switch. So uh, the fiddle is tuned in intervals of a fifth starting on a low G, G, D, A, E. The G low string can only be played open. The D, A, and E can be played either fingered or as an open string. Tonally, they have a very different sound quality to them. So let me just jump to the front page for a moment to show you something. If I play low G, watch the display here. It says open string. That's the only way you can do it. The D says fingered string. What if I want that to be played as an open string? Then I hold down my open string key switch. And now it says open. The open is going to be a bit brighter. Here's A, fingered, A open. E, fingered, E open. I can invert that selection if I go back to the key switch page. Right here it says invert. And what will happen then is now when I play the note without a key switch held down, I'll get the open string, and then when I hold down the key switch, it'll go to the closed string. So you can set that up any way you like. Uh, it's great to have control over the open string versus the closed string, because realistically, fiddle players are going to use both. Another thing that's important to understand about the key switches is they can be used in combination with each other. You don't have to only use one key switch. So I'll just take a look at the manual for a moment. Attack and legato can be combined with up bow and down bow. Up bow and down bow can be combined with staccato, hyper staccato, crunch, and unison. All the slides can be combined with unison. Uh, that's actually kind of an interesting effect, so uh, just to demonstrate that. So I'll hold down uh, the unison key, if I can find it, here it is. And I'll hold down a key switch for a slide. Sorry, I'm hitting two keys at once. So, first of all, what is a unison? A unison is when you play, for example, an open D against a fingered D. So you get, a, you get two Ds ringing. It has a, this chorusing effect. So here's a unison just by itself. D. Here's an open D. Here's a unison D. Two Ds at once. Right? So you're hearing a fingered D against an open D. They're never exactly in tune. You get this kind of fat chorusing sound. So if I do that and I combine that with a slide, so what are we hearing? We're hearing the slide from a half step below a D note there, from a C sharp into a D, and we're hearing it against the open D. And then it eventually melts right into the D and we have a unison, two notes at the same time. So that's a, a very cool fiddly type effect. Another thing about the key switch page which I don't want to neglect to mention is you can change the assignment of these key switches. The, the sampled notes in blue of course we have to leave alone of the fiddle. But say for example uh, on this whole step slide here on, uh, on C1 I want to change that lower. So all I do is I find that in my fiddle matrix here, whole step up, click on that it says learn key switch. I just press the key and you can see now that has been changed to Z0. It's been moved down here. If I want to move it back, just click on it again, click where it was and you're back where you started. And this way you can customize your layout of key switches. I haven't really listened too much to what these key switches actually sound like, all the articulations. I think the demos show that pretty well, but just very quickly, here's a half step up slide. <coughs> slow, here's medium, here's half up fast, uh, here's a whole step up slow, whole step up medium, whole step up fast. 
And remember, you can go to the slides page and change the speed of these or, you know, start partway through the sample, change the attack. Um, here's downward a half step. Downward a whole step. Next one is unison. Uh, the thing about unison, technically on the fiddle, you can only do a unison on a D note, an A note, and an E note. But since we're in the virtual world, we can do it on any note. Uh, so here's a few unisons. But I can play it on B flat. But you know, fiddle players, just for your own reference, they play in the sharp keys in the relative minors. You know, they'll play in D major, G major, C major and their relative minors, maybe F major, but, uh, you know, they don't play an E-flat typically. Uh, where was I? Oh, crunch samples. This is with the fiddle player just really bearing down on the note. Just really laying into it. Staccato. Hyper staccato. And then we have our impose key switches after that. So let's move on to the effects very quickly. We go down here to the effects panel, click on that, and on the right hand side you see our global effects that we have to offer. And we have a drop down menu here where you can go through each one and tweak it. The first two effects, the compressor and the EQ, we have multiple choices of tools here. So if I click on the compressor menu, you see I have a choice of three different compressors. You can set your parameters here. We can save the presets for any of these effects. So this drop-down menu gives you the ability to save a preset or to save a bank of presets. Uh, the beauty of this is if you're using the other fiddle instrument, which is called Extras, which I'll talk about in a moment, if you want to use that with this instrument and have it match, like you'd come up with an EQ or an IR convolution reverb, you can just save that preset, apply it to the other instrument, and the sound of the instruments will match perfectly. We also have delay, reverb, and space IR convolution. On the space IR convolution, we have all these different choices of ambience, chambers, churches, halls, plates, and room reverbs. I've loaded up the fiddle extras instrument. This has some extra articulations for you to work with. Uh, it defaults to chops, and it doesn't look like there's much here on the keyboard, but you'll see that will change in a moment. So, uh, that is a downward chop. That's the release of the chop. So the fiddle player comes down on the string, percussive, and then they release the bow off the string. They use that a lot when they're accompanying other players, or as a special sound effect. So if I press on the next key switch, it shows now the notes G, D, A, and E. So this is just the open strings of the fiddle plucked with the left hand. Sometimes they use these as special effects in songs, like a famous one is called the Orange Blossom Special. So that's what that is. If I hit that key switch again, notice it returns back to my default key switch, which is the chops. So let's go to C sharp now. What do I have here? I have harmonics, and those are downstrokes. If I go to D, and you, the display tells me what I'm using, by the way, right here. I should have pointed that out to you. So harmonics down bow. Here's harmonics up bow. Okay, next one, FX. So these are just kind of some, well, here's what they are. Right, sliding things. <laughs> Just some fun stuff for you to work with. Uh, the next one are tunings. So what this is, is the fiddle player just getting their intonation right before we did a sample, since, since we had all this audio to work with and each note was check the tuning. Uh, so they're not using their physical tuners on the fiddle. They're not tuning it that way. They're just getting the intonation right. I just thought it'd be cool to have these available. I use it at the beginning of one of the demos, but here's what these sound like. 
and they're mapped basically to each pitch for each key. Some of them are longer. You know, it's somebody just kind of getting set up to record a sample. Okay, and then the pages on this instrument. We have the same microphone page as before. Everything still applies. Expressions page, we can use the dynamics to a CC or pitch bend like before. The FX page. We, so when we engage the, the FX key switch, these, here we can increase the speed of the sample, or we could start partway through the sample, and we could even, you know, tweak the attack. So if you want to just set those up, you know, tempo-wise a little differently, or start in the middle of an effect, you can do that. The settings page, on the harmonics key switch, we can control the attack of the harmonic, the curve, and the sample start as well. And also, we can take care of the bow noise if you want to filter out some bow noise, just like on the previous instrument. The key switch page is no different than the other key switch page. It shows you their assignments. And the about page is the little built-in manual about the instrument. So there you have it. Fiddle for contact. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy using it. Thank you.